carbs and fiber, do obligate carnivores need it? We're gonna find out. So today, carbs and fiber, that is the topic. We're going to do a quick recap on carbs, storage, why they aren't essential, <laughs> spoiler alert, carb groups, studies, and diabetes, fiber, a quick recap, what it is in different forms, dietary fiber, short chain fatty acids, and whole prey, adapted from all of these books, resources, yada yada. So recap on carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the main energy containing constituent of plants. They include simple sugars, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Glucose is an important energy source for many tissues. A constant supply is necessary for the proper functioning of the central nervous system. The central nervous system and erythrocytes require glucose for energy needs. Glycogen is the storage form of glucose excess. It is found in the liver and muscle and helps maintain normal glucose homeostasis in the body. However, Carbohydrates are not essential to cats because they can maintain blood sugar levels by making glucose in the body from amino acids. Protein hormones, insulin, and glucagon are two examples. Carbohydrate groups. Absorbable carbohydrates include monosaccharides such as glucose and fructose. Digestible carbs are disaccharides and some oligosaccharides. Fermentable carbs include lactose and some oligosaccharides and non-fermentable carbs include fibers such as cellulose, which is an insoluble fiber. Those are the typical fibers that you see in cat food. Carnivore fantasy. Here's a very interesting study we'll look at called Cats and Carbohydrates, the Carnivore Fantasy. The title seems like they're trying to prove that cats need carbohydrates as if being a carnivore is just a fantasy. There are some good points in this study along the lines of cats are carnivores and that they don't need carbohydrates, but then the study makes points that somewhat support feeding carbohydrates to cats. This study was put together by Royal Canin Veterinary Diets Endowed Chair in Canine and Feline Clinical Nutrition at the Ontario Veterinary College. You may or may not know Royal Canin is owned by Mars Pet Care, the same company that makes candy bars and other junk food for humans. Mars also owns several veterinary hospitals, so just keep that in mind. And the study is linked at the bottom of the screen, and this graph on the right shows prey and the carb percent on a dry matter basis. This is based on Rodent Pro. It's a breeding facility that, that sells whole prey. They actually have a guaranteed analysis, and I use my carb calculator guesstimate tool. And so the mouse has about 8.7% carbs on a dry matter basis, estimate. Rat, zero, and quail, zero. So what is the good? In the abstract, it states, quote, the domestic cat's wild ancestors are obligate carnivores that consume prey containing only minimal amounts of carbohydrates. Evolutionary events adapted the cat's metabolism and physiology to this diet, strictly composed of animal tissues and led to unique digestive and metabolic peculiarities of carbohydrate metabolism. The domestic cat still closely resembles its wild ancestor. Moreover, studies show that domestic cats balance macronutrient intake by selecting low carbohydrate foods. And another quote about glucose, this high endogenous glucose demand of the brain as well as other obligate glucose consuming tissues cannot be met by carbohydrates present in the natural prey based diet. This explains a high capacity for de novo synthesis of glucose from amino acids and increased dietary and amino acid requirements in cats. And another bit on fiber, animal fiber has been overlooked in the carnivore diet. Animal fiber consists of indigestible glycoprotein rich material such as bone, tendon, cartilage, skin, hair, and feathers and is a substrate for large intestinal microbial fermentation. Important, animal fiber, not plant fiber. Now we look at the bad. <laughs> Another quote, this evolutionary background has served as a basis for the several myths about cat nutrition. For example, sometimes the fact that cats are strict carnivores is interpreted as meaning that cats can only obtain their nutritional requirements through consuming animal tissue. This is incorrect from a nutritional perspective as animals, including cats, need nutrients and not specific ingredients. Now, this is very interesting. I understand what they're saying in that you can't just look at the ingredients, you also have to look at the nutrients. And technically they have a nutritional requirement for amino acids. 
However, if we go back to the previous slide, the domestic cat still closely resembles its wild ancestor. What does their wild ancestor eat? Whole prey. Domestic cats balance macronutrient intake by selecting low carbohydrate foods. Meat doesn't have any carbohydrates in it, right? They also have increased dietary protein and amino acid requirements. Animal fiber, not plant fiber. So ingredients do matter, not just the nutrients, but the ingredients that those nutrients provide or don't provide more importantly. So we'll continue on the bad. The digestion portion, the total apparent digestibility of starch is reported to be 40 to 100%, which proves that cats can digest and absorb carbohydrates. As in other mammals, proper processing and cooking is necessary. So I'm just gonna put it out there. Of course, they're going to say this because this type of brand of cat food relies heavily on starch. Starch is required in dry food and frankly, it's also in canned food, but it's required in dry food because that's what binds the ingredients together. Plus, starchy ingredients are much cheaper than meat. So let's talk about diabetes. And I included this graphic here with the, <laughs> with, <laughs> with the insulin and <laughs> the donuts. So quote, although low carbohydrate diets are a good option for some cats, Good control and possibly remission can also be achieved with a higher carbohydrate diet designed for the management of diabetes. <sighs> Blows my mind. These higher carbohydrate diets do not contain simple sugars, have sources of complex carbohydrates that are less glycemic, and also include dietary fiber to help manage body weight and blood glucose response. But again, they can make glucose from amino acids. And animal based meat is a complete amino acid profile, whereas plant-based protein is not complete. Speaking of diabetes, Dr. Elizabeth Hodgkins owns a patent in which she treats diabetes in several cats with an appropriate carnivore diet. She states, quote, the method includes the step of feeding the carnivore a nutritionally balanced diet that includes a low carbohydrate content, a high protein content, and a moderate, moderate fat content. On the right is the first example study that she performed with one cat for nine weeks. The cat was previously eating Pills Riot, it rhymes with that, dry foods with high carbohydrates. So the cat was switched to a wet formulation with a high moisture, high protein, moderate fat, and low carb content. On the first date, the cat was getting 3.5 units of insulin. And just on day nine, that was reduced to three units. On day 11, 2.5, 13, two units. And then on day 15, it was switched down to one unit. To 20 days, half a unit. And then everything else except for one day was zero units. So at the end of the trial, at day 66, zero units. And even on day 38 through 36, zero units, which is really, really crazy. The patent also includes a second example study with 12 cats. And she states, quote, all cats showed clinical improvement. These results indicate that a nutritionally balanced diet, including low carbohydrate, high protein content, moderate fat of the present invention improved the condition of cats suffering from diabetes. So I think that if this diet can reverse and put cats into remission, then logically we can state that this type of diet can also help prevent diabetes. So back with the other study about carbs and carnivore fantasy, you know, they say, well, if it's cooked properly, they can digest it. That doesn't mean that they should digest it though, or even consume it. So a quick recap on fiber. What is fiber? Fiber is the edible part of plants, which are mostly carbohydrates. The main sources are fruits and gums. These fibers either have complete or partial fermentation in the large intestine. So we have soluble fibers. They can hold water and most typically make poops softer. Most are moderately or highly fermentable in the large intestine. They affect GI functions like stomach emptying time and transit time. Then we have insoluble fiber. They do not absorb water and do not make feces soft. They are typically included to increase bulk. They are generally much less fermentable. Short chain fatty acids, certain types of fiber are broken down in the large intestine and create short chain fatty acids. However, cats cannot get significant energy from this because of the short and simple structure of their large intestine. Then we have prebiotics. Certain fermentable fibers act as prebiotics. They provide benefits by creating specific bacteria in the GI flora. 
This is helpful for health and well-being even though the cat does not directly digest it. Dietary fiber. Fiber refers to many compounds called complex carbohydrates. It is different from starch because fibers resist enzymatic digestion in the small intestine. As a result, microbes in the colon usually ferment fibers. The major carb components of dietary fiber are cellulose, hemicellulose, pectin, and plant gums, and mucilages. Cats do not directly digest dietary fiber, but microbes found in the large intestine are able to break down certain types of fiber to different degrees. This bacterial fermentation produces short-chain fatty acids and other end products. Short-chain fatty acids. The short-chain fatty acids that are produced in greatest abundance are acetate, propionate, and butyrate. But the magnitude of bacterial digestion depends on various factors like the type of fiber, GI transit time, and the intake of other dietary constituents. Cats cannot produce energy from short-chain fatty acids like herbivores can. However, the short-chain fatty acids that are produced provide energy for the epithelial cells lining the GI tract. Active cells in the large intestine have a high turnover rate and rely on short-chain fatty acids as an energy source. Short-chain fatty acids have antibacterial properties that may decrease pathogenic intestinal bacteria, regulate the colonization by pathogenic bacteria, and may be important in intestinal disorders and cancers. Absorption. Short-chain fatty acids facilitate the absorption of sodium chloride and water in the colon. The gut microflora produce biotin, vitamin D, carbon dioxide, and methane. Excess. Flatulence, abdominal distension, and diarrhea are all signs that there is an excessive fermentation and production of short-chain fatty acids. What about whole prey? Now, this study was very interesting and highly appreciate this. This veterinarian submitted this as his dissertation for the degree of Master of Veterinary Medicine. He wanted to study animal-based fiber versus plant-based fiber with regard to satiety. So he quotes, currently domestic cats are mostly fed commercial food instead of a more natural diet of prey animals. Ha! Ah, veterinarian said that, love it. It is important to illuminate each area in which the whole prey diet differs from commercial food. By performing extensive research into the satiating effect of animal fiber, one of the most common multifactorial nutritional disorders in pets can hopefully be tackled, and they're talking about obesity. In feral cats, the estimated daily intake from nitrogen-free extract, which mainly consists of digestible carbohydrates, is about 2%. I've seen dry foods as high as 49%. Evidently, in cats, the main source of short-chain fatty acids that are produced by the microbiota of the hindgut are derived from protein fermentation, as the natural diet of Philidae only barely consists of dietary carbohydrates. So these short-chain fatty acids, yes, they are important, but cats don't need fiber for them. They can produce them from protein fermentation. So this study aimed to figure out if animal fiber was more satiating than plant-based fiber because typically with overweight and obese cats, a high plant-based fiber prescription diet is used because they think that it's going to increase satiety and therefore the cat won't eat as much. But this study used both and they used puzzle toys to see if, if the cat would actually work for the reward of food. They said no substantial conclusions were drawn, but I'm still glad that they did this because they specifically looked at whole prey. And this veterinarian even said whole prey is the natural diet of cats. And then on the right here, I have the same little graph. This is based on the mouse, rat, and quail and the 5% on a dry matter basis all across the board, 0%. So do cats need fiber? I think wheatgrass, aka catgrass plants are a great addition to a fresh food diet. Jericho has a fresh plant available whenever he needs it. So whenever he needs it, he eats it. He chooses that. Additionally, he eats whole prey, which is full of animal-based fiber a couple times a week. Jericho's diet is roughly 0.3% fiber on a dry matter basis, and his poops are completely normal, so he does not need additional fiber. However, prebiotics are beneficial because that's what feeds probiotics, which are the good bugs, and probiotics regulate the bad bacteria in the gut. And the gut microbiome is essential for overall health. Raw green tripe is part of Jericho's diet. This is the stomach lining of ruminant grass grazing animals. So this would contain some of the pre-digested plant material in it. Note, 
pre-digested. Plus Jericho's diet is 100% raw, so he gets plenty of probiotics and prebiotics from natural carnivore foods. We will discuss the fascinating gut microbiome and bacteria in future chapters. Up next, we will discuss vitamins. So we'll talk about each vitamin, what it does, and a quick overview of different sources for each. Post your questions in the comments, that way I can make an FAQ video and answer in future lessons. Some things to prepare for now. Jericho. Calculate the number of carbs in your cat's current food if you didn't already do that in chapter one. Start to keep a log of your cat's bathroom habits and continue the transition to better quality food. All of those transition plans are on my website at catacles.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.